All right, guys, you've convinced me. We will watch the internet's darkest and spoopiest corners. Ooh. I don't know. I made that last part up, but it's a Nick Crowley video. You guys like that guy a lot. I do, too. He's cool. He's a handsome guy, I think. I don't really know if I've ever seen him uh, at all, but he's handsome. You got to be. Let's be real. Anyway, this is the internet's darkest corners three. Ooh, I didn't know the internet had corners. I thought it was around <laughs> like me because I'm chunky. Let's go. I hate these videos, though. They make me so scared. I'm already getting scared for the tone of the video. It is the early morning, and the working day of the steam locomotive and its crew is just beginning. Stop. Stop that. Bro, stop it. Jesus. It was the 31st of August, 2023. 2023? That's like a month and change ago. What are you talking about? It can't be that close. If it's that close, then it's too real. And then I get more scared. This needs to be in an altered... Because like, basically, anything like anything 2005 and before is a different universe. It doesn't exist anymore. That's too old for it to count in our current universe. I don't process information that's far long ago. That's, cr that's a long time ago. That's 18 years, I think. That's wild. <clears throat> but this year... No, thank you. A typical day for 34-year-old Michael Zanera, as he had yet again spent his afternoon working hard on the railway. Michael was a welder who had been putting in long hours right. repairing train tracks like in nice northern guy. Italy, a job he seemed to thoroughly enjoy, as he'd often post various images and videos onto his TikTok page. What the fuck is this? Is this what TikTok used to look like? What is this? I, I honestly, if they made an aesthetic change for TikTok to look like that, I would be, uh, I would, I would, I would look at it. That's pretty cool, to be honest with you. Showcasing this unique work that he was doing. By this point, this was the type of content that you typically expect from Michael, with some other images and various trucks. memes sprinkled in here and there. Cultivating into a rather inconspicuous page that, for the most part, flew yeah. completely <clears throat> under the radar. Yeah. Or at least it did until that final day of August, yep. when Michael would encounter one of the strangest moments of his entire <clears throat> life. Yep. Um, the hell is that? The post each I can't read that. What, what language is that even? Share was just a single image, showcasing what Check appeared out. to be one of the tracks he had been working on, with a strange glowing cross at its center. For more context, Michael would write. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, listen. I I know you guys don't care about my game, but I okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just did something that was a real piece of shit move. Okay, I'm gonna explain it to you really quick. All right, I just have to kill something, and then I have to use a drum on it, and it gives me its soul. And this guy killed it, and I took the soul from it, but he needed the soul for it, so I stole it from him. And I just thought it was mean and kind of funny. So sorry, guys. Didn't mean to. Interrupt the, the pacing of the video. It's the first time this has happened to me while I'm balancing the rail. The crucifix came out. God Shit. definitely wants to tell me something, even though I've been calling him every day lately, because hell? it's not a good time for me. Damn. It was quite the strange coincidence, especially That's considering crazy. that Michael himself was known to be very religious and a devout believer in God. And he had right. been calling out to God for months, looking for some sort of sign. My wife calls out to God sometimes too. When she's fucking another guy. <laughs> but I do watch. Help him out of this dark patch that he had found himself in. And in his mind, this inexplicable red cross was it. It had to mean something. Yeah. But he just couldn't figure out what. And so we posted the image to TikTok to share it with the world <clears throat> before continuing on with his work, likely having the vision of this cross looming in the back of his mind all day, trying to figure out what exactly this could be foreshadowing. Yeah. And just 24 hours later, yep, he, died, he, shit he would get his answer. What is the answer? An investigation's underway after five railway workers were killed by a speeding train in northern Italy. They were working on replacing what the fuck? Wait, is he one of the ones that died? Is this supposed to be somebody warning him? That he's gonna die? What the hell? Seeing parts of the track at the Brandizzo station near Turin when the locomotive slammed into them. What the fuck? On the 1st of September, 2023, 
Just one day following Michael's post, he and six others had been continuing their maintenance on the tracks when, out of nowhere, a train would come hurtling towards them Damn. at a speed far too great to properly react to, as according to reports, the men had been working late at night welding train tracks. At their Damn, the person giving the report sounds just like Nick Crowley. That's fucking wild, brother. That's crazy. They were busy going about their job, an oncoming train headed straight towards them at 100 miles per hour, That's killing most of the team of workers and throwing their bodies hundreds of meters in the air. Within that group, five of the seven men would tragically perish, with the victims being named <coughs> as Kevin Lagana, Giuseppe Servillo, Giuseppe Lombardo, Giuseppe Aversa, and Michael Zanera. Giuseppe, 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 Michael? This is a weird... Uh, okay, what the fuck? Why are so many Giuseppes? Is that like Miguel? For Italian people or something? Or... That's terrible. What? How tragic. Who was pronounced dead at the scene. Damn. Passing away on the very tracks that just one day prior had yielded what he and many others believed to be a sign from God. Damn. The cause of imagine this tragedy though? is still currently under investigation. But imagine that this is terrible, but imagine that like they didn't, they avoided their death and then final destination ensued. You know, that would be fucking crazy. That's terrible. With early reports hinting at it being nothing more than a tragic accident, <laughs> And whether this glowing red cross was some sort of divine intervention or just simply an eerie coincidence, yeah, Michael's true. final post remains haunting nonetheless. I don't know what it is, man. And has now found a permanent home in the internet's darkest corners. Damn. They know that or maybe Michael was trying to attempt to take his own life. And he's, he manufactured this to make it into an interesting moment for all of us to watch and go, that's creepy, bro. That's fucking crazy. That's probably not true, and a little disrespectful. So, so I'm sorry, and rest in peace. But the only right track. All right, what if we got? What if like? What if Nick Crowley did a video where like it wasn't? It was one of them was like fun, you know? It's like, hey, uh, this guy is alive. He just didn't die. He's a guy. He's actually happy now. Whatever happened to him was good for him, and he's even better off. He's actually really. He's really happy. He's a really happy guy. He's a happy camper. Uh, a situation happened that you would think would be tragic, but it, it fucking was not. You know? Like, maybe, oh, a guy got bit by a fucking radioactive spider. But instead of melting and dying, he actually got superpowers. <clears throat> How's that? From the tracks all together. One of the most startling facts about witches is that there are more of them today than ever before. Before we dive into our next rabbit hole, I want to first thank today's sponsor, Grammarly, for making this video financially viable. Nice. For essentially all my life, I dreamed of one day becoming a YouTuber. But now that I've been lucky enough to do this as a career, there has been one unexpected downside Bad. that has haunted me for years. Yeah, having to pay your own fucking taxes, what a pain in the ass. I hate that shit. Business emails. My online communication in general is absolutely <sighs> abysmal, and I am- Alright, I get it. Uh, go check his video out, Grammarly, link in the description, dude. <clears throat> To her husband, she must be a companion, a sweetheart. Oh, these two look nice. She must know how to make her home comfortable and inviting. Chapter 2, HusbandDie.com. What the fuck? Our next case takes us to Japan. I'm right? thinking that this is just a website to help you with your husband's hair dye. In case he's getting a little gray. Me personally, though, I feel like I like the gray a little bit. A little, I'm getting a little gray. It's a little silver fox. Who doesn't like a good silver fox? I think that I'd rather go that way. 18 years ago, one of the strangest websites that I've ever come across would be launched for the world to see. Now, to properly understand its context, it's important to note that, in large part, Japan is a country that culturally looks oh, down on the practice of divorce. So much okay. so that in most cases, a partner can't separate on their sole discretion, and it must instead be approved by both parties, that sucks. making it a difficult thing to achieve in general. Yeah, it sounds like if you were being abused in a relationship, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman, you're a shit out of luck. That's terrible, brother. <clears throat> and those that actually are able to go through with it are often judged in an extremely negative light, Damn. especially by their family members. 
For these reasons, couples will often wind up being stuck together regardless of their feelings towards one another. Okay. And it's this very sense of being trapped with someone that you don't actually love that can lead to emotions turning sour very quickly, with many eventually reaching yeah, Well, I imagine not even just say you don't love, like I said, some of them they probably beat the shit out of you, maybe are abusive to you, and it's not even, a, it might even be a matter of like survival, you know? Point of pure hatred for their spouse. Hatred that has led to the rise of one of Japan's darkest websites. Danashin.com. Is it dot com website? I feel like that should be harder to get to. English husbanddie.com. The crazy. form takes inspiration from the manga Death Note, a series in which characters write a name in a. Of course, there's got to be some kind of anime reference in it, something going on in Japan. Oh, what if we made Death Note real? Right? Just like Squid Games. What if we made. Oh, that's Korean. What if we made capitalism real? You know? It's like scary. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> which ultimately leads to their demise. It's a manifestation of sorts, and on danasheen.com, users are given an outlet to manifest death upon their husbands. Shit. But this goes far past just typing their name out and hoping that they eventually perish. You gotta like, Instead, uh, pay each post a contains bucks. some sort of description as to why their husband is so hated and how yeah. they wish that they would just die already. <clears throat> Damn. What do I have to do to get you to die? Hurry up already. I pray for it every single f day. You're Damn. the most selfish person I've ever met. Damn. Even the kids hate you. So there's no How the fuck, dude? You got somebody you got you got to really hate. You got to be a real piece of shit, I think, for somebody to want you to be dead. Or you got to be a real piece of shit to wish death onto somebody. Maybe that's why these people are married together. <laughs> I don't know. That's fucked up. No need for you here. My life started its downfall because I met you. You should have never become a husband or yeah, a father. That's me. I'm the one who is the biggest fool in all of this for not being able to see that until it was too late. Just f disappear from this universe. Jesus. Just disappear. I keep telling myself that I will be patient until my child <clears throat> becomes of high school age. But every day is nothing but pain. Don't you understand that when you say you won't show your smartphone, you're admitting it? Reserve insurance. Oh, shit. Full expectation. He's cheating, dude. He's fucking cheating, dude. He's not showing his smartphone. You got to show your smartphone. Or you got to be smart. You got to say, oh, I can't show you my smartphone right now. I'm planning your birthday. And they'll be like, wow, really? I say, absolutely. Of course. The only problem with that is then you actually have to plan their birthday. So, I mean, fellas, what's worse? Your girl catching you cheating or having to plan a party for your girl? I mean, it's actually a toss up because what a pain in the ass. Because you can never, the expect, the, the, you can never get it right. You know what I mean? You can never get a party right. The expectations are, are insanely high. It's ridiculous. To me, at least. <clears throat> Die before that and make amends. Posts like these are littered across the site with thousands of women venting their allegations. Well, I mean, why would the guy get a divorce? Like, think about it. Think about that. Like, why would that dude get a divorce? Okay, he's sitting there. He's cheating on his wife. He lives in a country where women are expected to do the lion's share of the chores. So he's going to work, which he's going to do anyway. He's got, and he's talking to other girls, which he gets to do anyway. And then guess what? He also gets somebody to take care of his kids for him. And he gets to take care of his uh, house for him and have all that other shit, iron his clothes, whatever, the laundry. He's basically got a personal maid, right? That's why in America, <laughs> that's why you see this shit in America where women are initiating the divorce more. It's it's not because the women are the ones wanting to get a divorce. It's because as a dude, when you're in a loveless relationship, based on the distribution of, of, of work, it's usually the guy in America, at least guy and girls both working, and the girls expected to do everything at home. Duh, you know? Allegations of infidelity, neglect, and even abuse at the hands of their own husbands. Allegations that society Damn. would likely frown upon if they were said out loud. And allegations that would likely lead to divorce, which would be considered far too taboo. Ooh, taboo. And so, with nowhere to go to with these issues, Ooh. this site has become a space for women to share their dark feelings with others Damn. going through these similar issues. Crazy. Though women this merch. goes far past just venting. Shh. As users will go Long as best. far as to outwardly celebrate the deaths of their husband when Damn. it finally does happen. My husband died. Finally, he died. Jesus Thank you Christ. for granting the god of death my wish. Damn. I will spend a lot of time laughing from now on. To which a user responds, Congratulations. What the fuck? I envy you. I want to sleep too. I hope that your future will be wonderful. Bro, they're just sitting there fucking flicking their bean. Like, I hope my husband's fucking dies soon. God damn it. Ugh. Jesus Christ. God of death, I also <clears throat> want to be freed from my damn husband. Please take ours with you as well. 
this concept of... Like, I mean, if your husband's such an asshole, why would God want him to... Why would the God of death be like, yeah, I'll, let me hang out with this fucking dick. Let me go fucking... Hey, hey, asshole, let's go have... I'm going to kill you, and we're going to hang out. I would If I was the God of death, I would only kill the nice people. I don't want to hang out with you, dick. Yeah, this guy, this guy wouldn't give me a stick of gum in class. You're going to live forever. Okay. Because fuck you. The God of Death is one that is mentioned countless times across this forum, making it apparent that users genuinely believe that their posts are manifestations, and essentially prayers to this God of Death, in the hopes that they will then kill off their troubled husbands. Shit. And the Donashin site leans into this too, taking credit for the numerous deaths with a monthly counter that's proudly displayed Jesus. on the site's homepage. I can't read Japanese. What is the it's number? It's this very god of death okay. that so many place their trust into <clears throat> in order to end the lives of their spouse, praying for things like car accidents, heart attacks, and a variety of other terrible health conditions. But while many eagerly wait for their manifestations to come to light, others aren't so patient. Oh shit. I want to somehow find a way to kill my husband without getting caught. Damn. I'll pretend to be sad when he dies, so please really die. I hate him from the bottom of my heart, and if I make uh, him shut up, I would win. I hate myself for why I married such a person. Oh, this post shit. in particular has become one of the more notorious entries on the site, given its user's outward admission of their murderous desire. Damn. Though truthfully, it's one of thousands, as many others oh. even take this a step further. Like one post that was so disturbing that YouTube made me remove it from this video, as what it quite literally hell? gave step-by-step -step instructions on how to poison your husband without him noticing, mentioning how they slipped up to 1200 milligrams of this certain drug into their husband's drinks every single day, a drug that would slowly cause- What's the drug? <laughs> Cause the liver to fail, Damn. but would likely never really be noticed by regular hospital staff. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I can see why they censored that. They don't want you to know what, like, drug. It doesn't show up in drug tests or whatever. ...a foolproof way for them to kill their husbands. Damn. And this is one of many posts like this, outlying how to... I mean, if you really want to kill your husband, just feed him like shit and then have sex with him and he'll get too excited. His heart, his heart will explode. Boom, you're done. You finished it. You did it. You did it. You killed your husband. You fucking won. Okay. You won. Murder your husband and get away with it. Murder your with husband. With many even com. reporting their progress as it happens, due to the fact that poisoning someone in this manner takes months and even years to successfully complete. Damn. The hell Everything is about Donashin.com is terrible, oh. as the posts themselves are twisted enough, but you also have to factor how bad these women's lives are at home, many of whom are Possibly. quite clearly stuck in abusive relationships. Imagine some of them are just like having the time of their life, their husband's just too nice, you know? They're like, he would even divorce me if he wanted, but I just fucking hate this guy. He's too nice. Sometimes being too nice is not good. People will walk all over you, or they'll poison you to death. So be careful, all right? Be a little meaner, guys. And beneath all the darkness of the site meaner. is another layer that's honestly just very sad. Damn. As there are many like users who call to the god sad. of death to take themselves, Damn. accepting that there is no escaping their situations and not wanting to deal with it anymore, manifesting accidents and health issues onto themselves as to not shame their family that's by intentionally crazy. their own lives. <sighs> Despite the depressing and concerning nature of this entire website, Donashin.com still remains relatively active all these years later, and stands as one of- I feel like they should take it down. That seems a little immoral. <laughs> that seems like not a good website. The darkest rabbit holes that I've gone down all year. Scary. Spoopy. I'm spooked right now. Engines are warming up, and inside all right, it's going to be a good segment. Mr. Schroeder, the engineer who has driven locomotives for many years. Uh, the safety of all the passengers depends... There's a uh, common train theme in this one for some reason. ...depends on his skill and watchfulness. Last call for... Fire Department, Fire Department, on 58. What's the address of the emergency? Uh, yes, um, I'm on the Metrolink train. We just left uh, Northridge. We had a collision with something. We have a whole bunch of people going out, bleeding, and on the floor. Is that train? It's the Metrolink train. The fuck? This call was placed... I'm never taking a train again. <laughs> I like the train, but this is scary. The 911 on the afternoon of September 12th, 2008. This is why people are afraid to go outside their goddamn house. So it just scares me. By a patron trapped inside a derailed train. Inside the cart, there was no way to fully understand. The oh, well, if he's one of my patrons, he's only paying $2 a month for my, for my Patreon. 
you give your name goes across the top of the screen. So that's a very inappropriate plug. Sorry. The traumatic event that they had just survived. Damn. As around them stood nothing lived. but mangled debris I mean that, that once comprised two large trains. Trains that had violently collided <clears throat> at a combined speed of 83 miles per hour. Why? Head on. Why? It was gruesome. What is trapped within speed, that dude? twisted metal were hundreds of passengers who had taken the commuter train in California's San Fernando Valley. And as the smoke would eventually clear on the tragedy, the question was quickly posed, how could this have happened? Yeah. A question that wouldn't take long to answer. According yeah. to the NTSB, the Metrolink passenger train responsible for carrying over 200 commuters had been given a red signal alerting them to merge into an oncoming track in order to avoid an oncoming Union Pacific freight train, which at the time only had crew members aboard. Based on their positioning, the Union Pacific freight train had the right of way. Though despite this and being given the clear signal, Metrolink's engineer Robert M. Sanchez failed to adhere. In fact, despite the impending collision seemingly being imminent, the brakes were never so much as tapped. Why? A startling phenomenon <laughs> that is only really understood when sifting through the man's phone records. Did he want to do something like this? What the fuck? Meanwhile, authorities are now confirming the engineer had been text messaging the day of the accident. Oh, I'm sitting here thinking he's planning on doing something. What they're saying is he's just sitting on his fucking phone. Damn. In the minutes leading to the collision, Robert Sanchez had sent out numerous texts, including some to friends of his who were fellow train enthusiasts. And these messages seemingly distracted him to the point of not just missing the signal, but failing to notice the massive hurtling train coming directly towards him. In the end, Robert would be killed instantly in the wreck, along Jesus. with 24 others. All the while, 135 people were left with serious injuries. It's so weird, because I mean, I imagine if you're a conductor on a train, you're probably not necessarily always paying attention. Um, Because, you know, you're mostly there to, like, speed up or slow down the train every once in a while. But Jesus Christ, dude. Like, you know, you're supposed to have one eye on the road. Don't text and drive, guys, but... If you're going to do it, got to be good at it. Don't fixate. But despite how notorious this collision has since become, thanks in large part due to Robert's behavior leading to it, it has since gained additional notoriety on the internet thanks to a key detail centered around another cell phone. Shit. Following what? news of the collision being broadcast all across the area, Andrea Katz, the fiance of 49-year-old Charles Peck, immediately began to panic, as okay. she knew Charles was on board the train at the time of this collision. Her nerves were initially quelled, however, as she would realize that on her phone were multiple missed calls from Charles. Okay. Realizing this, she quickly called him back, though there was no answer, oh, which was made a bit more unusual as, only minutes later, Charles would call her back once more. Upon answering the phone, Bro, come on. Don't, don't, this is gonna be horrific. Nothing could be heard but the low sound of static. Before, Bro, I don't want to listen to it. they would be disconnected. This very same thing would happen once. That's scary. On the train, the same train video. Could you fucking imagine that shit, dude? Imagine like you're dying <clears throat> on a train and you just want to call your wife or your husband or your loved one one last time, and you call them and like just to hear their fucking voice. Damn, that's horrifying. That's fucking horrific. I feel like I would identify with that. I would do that, but I'm so scared. It's more, and then again, and again, all the while occurring at various intervals, as Charles seemed to be desperately calling, yet saying nothing. And when Andrea would try and call back herself, she would be sent straight to voicemail. And things became even more alarming from here, as numerous other family members began to receive these very same mysterious calls to which not a word was ever spoken. This led to the whole family believing that Charles must be trapped somewhere in the wreckage and was likely unable to speak due to his injuries, Damn. but was somehow managing to send these calls as a way of letting them know that he was in fact alive and just needed saving. Because of this, his family members would cheer him on and give him words of encouragement every single time he called, assuring him that rescue was on the way. And sure enough, authorities would use these calls to pinpoint Charles' exact location. Is he alive? With the coordinates Please. being right at the very center of the debris. Please, Jesus. Using this, rescuers would clear the way until finally, after 12 long hours, Charles Peck would be found. Alive, please. Which leads us to the strangest part of the story. Motherfucker, if he's not alive, I'm going to be upset. Charles was dead. Come on, and dude! 
Come on, bro. Give me some fucking good news for once. God damn it. This is so... I'm scared. I'm fucking terrified. Not freshly dead either, as it was quite obvious that he had died directly on impact, meaning that there was no physical way that he could have possibly made these calls, as he quite literally was not alive for any of them. I'm getting angry at you, dude. And yet, You're that day, real fucking mad. his son, his brother, his stepmother, his <clears throat> sister, and his fiance all received numerous calls I'm from him. Getting angry. 35 in total, and all spread out over the course of numerous hours. Piece of to shit. this day, this bizarre phenomenon has never fully been explained, with some theorizing that it must have been some sort of phone glitch, or maybe even another passenger who had found his phone and was placing calls to all of his recent numbers, though an official conclusion has never actually been given. And even stranger, Charles Peck's phone was never found. Or maybe somebody else found it, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't like you, Nick Crowley. Boy, I've never been so glad to get rid of somebody. Bro, does Big Bird die, Nicholas Crowley? Is that what happens here? Fucking Big Bird is dead? Is that what you're going to show me? That Big Bird is fucking dead? Because I'm not going to be able to handle that. I'm not going to be able to handle that kind of trauma. You understand, young man? In my whole life. September 19th, right. a man is crushed and tortured to <clears throat> death <throat> under the suspicion of practicing witchcraft. September 22nd, eight individuals are hanged on the same charges. And October 17th, four- Damn, could you imagine though, back in the day with this whole witch thing going on, where everybody believed that witchcraft was real and that you could really do some damage. They're like, oh man, I hope somebody doesn't cast like, I don't know, the huge cock spell or something, you know what I mean? Because that's an abuse of power, because mine's not that big. You know, and so they're sitting there and they're like chanting and raving and what, and nothing's happening because it's not real. I don't think you never know, but it's probably not real. Right. And so they're just chanting and they die. They just die. They're just like, they're like, and they just die. Somebody wrote an articulate book out of how to channel fucking witchcraft. And they're like, look at this guy. we we'll kill him. <laughs> but there's nothing happening. He basically just has a mental disorder. That's fucked up. If you think about it. It's fucking crazy. Four elderly women were hanged upon a belief that they too were witches. Damn. These stories will likely ring a bell with many watching today, especially those who are living in the United States, as back in the 1600s in the small town of Salem, Massachusetts, a bizarre mass hysteria had unfolded, leading to the deaths of 25 people. I heard that everybody, uh, I heard this has something to do with people uh, doing mushrooms or some shit. I don't know. All of whom had been incorrectly labeled as witches. The Salem witch trials are one of the darkest and most notorious tales ever told. I mean, either, just how either that or we got rid of all the witches. I, I don't know. But I'm scared. So that's it. Sorry. How unusual the whole event was, as it just seems so hard to imagine a situation like this actually occurring and most would understandably believe that something of this nature could never happen again, failing to realize that it actually already has. Dude, how? In fact, of the opening three executions, only two happened during the Salem Witch Trials, with the latter happening just two years ago. The practice was first reported to the Western world back in 1993, when the LA Times would feature an article titled, Kenyan villagers' suspicions, fear spark deadly witch hunt. Evil lurks beneath the tranquil facade of two highland districts, where vigilantes have burned to death 44 men and women accused of practicing harmful witchcraft. The fuck? The article goes on to explain how, since the previous summer, 44 men and women accused of practicing witchcraft had been burned to death in Kissy, as well as other nearby towns. Kissing? A number that's oh. nearly double the entirety of the Salem that's witch trials. Town. I'm sorry. In most cases, village mobs had formed, Peace some out, several hundred strong, locking the suspected witches in their home and setting the fire fuck? to the structures Jesus. as they were trapped inside. That's terrible. For more context, witchcraft is known to have deep roots in African culture. And despite many not having an issue with the practice in general, in the county of Kissy, a deep fear had grown over black magic in particular, with the villagers be- Oh, is that what's called black magic? <laughs> That's kind of racist. Damn. 
Okay. Coming paranoid that members of the community had been using said black magic to negatively influence the area. Despite the shocking claims made within the article, not much would be spoken of these witch trials following its release to the public, and remained relatively unknown until the rise of the internet. Witches. Stop, stop, distor stop distorting the audio, Nick. It fucking, it creeps me out, dude. That's not, I'm not trying to be creeped out right now. I'm, all right? I'm not watching this to be creeped out. I'm, I'm terrified for my life. In Kenya resulted in 11 people being Damn. burned to death. Eight women and three men were attacked by an angry mob and set Jesus. on fire. They burned down over 60 houses like this and brutally murdered 15 people. Most of them were elderly women. The charred corpses of 11 elderly Kenyan villagers oh, accused of practicing <laughs> witchcraft. In this incident three months ago, villagers watched as a group of youths torture five suspected witches. Nowadays, incidents from the Kissy area involving witches being- My question is, is that like, uh, as tragic as this is, why are they, why are they practicing the witchcraft though? If they, if people are going to fuck them up, you know, I mean, nobody should be fucking them up. I'm just asking a question. You know? Killed are heavily documented by villagers with cell phones, capturing images and videos of beatings, public shamings, and eventually the killings of these alleged witches providing some of the most chilling imagery I've ever seen on the internet and exposing the true horrors of this practice all across the world. And what's scariest of all is that it's not just one or two people doing the killing in secret, it's often the entire village. As anyone brave enough to step forward in support of them would be labeled as a witch sympathizer and potentially face the same punishment. And what makes this all even more disturbing is that in the vast majority of examples, the accused witches that are being tortured, set on fire, and beaten are usually elderly and are far too frail to do anything but accept their fate. Damn. Which is this supposed to be their way of trying to get rid of old people? It's fucked up. Brings us to the biggest question in all of this. Why? Well, despite the practice of executing witches being ingrained in this area's history, it's supposedly only really within the past 40 years or so that things have progressed into the barbaric attacks that they've become today, prompting some to believe that the ingrained fear of black magic has led to some sort of mass hysteria among the villagers, causing them to react in such a crazed manner, which has remained persistent for years on end now. Though there is one other element to consider, in the Kissy region, land is one of the most valuable things you can own. And coincidentally, oh, when you somebody weaponizing Is somebody going to be weaponizing uh <clears throat> accusations of witchcraft? Damn. When witches are killed, it just so happens to free up their land for the taking, which makes it all the more interesting when you consider that most of these victims just so happen to be elderly landowners. Damn. And it goes even deeper than that, as not only are these elderly landowners killed, but due to their designation as witches, the family members they leave behind are usually exiled or even killed due to- Really? That's fucking crazy. ...to their relation to the witch, meaning that the land can't be passed down to their next of kin as- So then who does it go to? Whoever wants it? Like, what is a government or something? There would be no family left in the area, making that land essentially open for the taking thus allowing the accuser Jesus. or accusers to take ownership. The incentive is certainly there for people to take advantage of this widespread fear of witches in order to essentially get free land with no real punishment. And I honestly think this greed surrounding land at the very least plays a role in this whole situation. Though Damn. truthfully, I wouldn't be surprised if this was some sort of combination of culture, mass hysteria, and land all rolled into one. Leading to the you notice how he doesn't think that it's possible that it's true? It's how you know he's racist, okay? It's how you know this guy's fucking racist. Just kidding. The worst of humanity being brought out. And though the local government has taken steps to help end this violence, these three factors may prove too much to ever see the practice fully end. And as long as it's happening, <clears throat> the internet will be there to capture it all. Well, maybe, maybe we don't want the internet no more. That's spooky, dude. That's scary shit. I'm so fucking scared right now. How did you make that scary to me, brother? That's not nice. Taylor Scrum began her TikTok account Scrum. back in October of 2020, 
Being just 20 at the time, Taylor had fallen in love with all things motorcycles, cool. dedicating her Weird. life and the Why? entirety of her TikTok page. A woman that likes motorcycles? That's interesting. Okay, I don't even like motorcycles. That's a goddamn death trap. The goddamn death trap, in my opinion. I remember one time I was at my job, my old job, when I, you know, when I worked a real job. I don't do that no more, but... I remember when I was there, there was a guy and uh, he was on, I was talking to him with a couple other guys and we were talking about, you know, getting new cars and whatnot. And I was like, yeah, what about a motorcycle? It's real cheap. It's a lot less expensive than a regular car. And he's like, yeah, it is. I said, yeah, but you're probably going to die. Those things are like a death machine. And it got very quiet. And, you know, I'm, I, I, got, I got a slight bit of tism. So I'm just sitting here like normal. Um, turns then he then you know five minutes later he was leaving work on a motorcycle so um, I think he got upset with that I think that's what upset him because he he rides a motorcycle but you know what it's still a fucking death trap I don't know what to tell you brother to this hobby of hers through the following <sighs> years Taylor would post various memes and inspirational videos to her page helping her amass a decent following along the way cool. with fellow riders appreciating the more niche aspects of her content and her attempts to break the stigma surrounding female motorcyclists. What's Though not stigma? all of her postings were without controversy. On various instances, Taylor would film videos of herself driving recklessly, soaring well past the speed limit and performing various dangerous tricks wow, while on the road. Terrible. With the stunts growing concerning enough to the point that TikTok began adding disclaimers to numerous of her videos, stating... Or you could just ban it outright and then she wouldn't engage in the behavior anymore. How about that? <clears throat> Participating in this activity could result in you or others getting hurt. Many of the things that Taylor had been showcasing on her page were downright reckless, and she seemed to acknowledge this all the while, joking about it across various videos on her page. Leading some to believe that Taylor had a death wish, or she seemingly just couldn't believe that a rider of her caliber could ever get into an accident, hinting at this on numerous occasions and showing no signs of changing her behavior. And she continued doing so all the way up until the 23rd of May, when Damn. her most notorious video yet would be released. <laughs> Damn. Did she die? Wigler County fatal crash. One Hopefully at least nobody else died that was unrelated. That's the worst. If you want to go drive and hurt somebody, don't do that. Or hurt yourself, don't do it. But, you know, whatever. But if you're going to do it to somebody else, that's terrible. 95 northbound at MM296. Multiple motorcycles traveling together. Approximately oh, three shit. motorcyclists went down. Two motorcyclists pronounced deceased on scene. Damn. Roadway is currently blocked at this time. Please seek alternative route. How terrible. You know, it's always, you know, it's always, it's always terrible when there's like a really bad accident on the highway or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's always tragic. But also, I got to get to work, you know? And I don't mean to be so callous about it, but it's like, you know, why couldn't you have drove better, bro? Because now I got to call and I got to say I'm going to be late and that's going to be a whole problem because I was, I've been late six times this week already. Even though there's only a five day where I managed it. <clears throat> and now all of a sudden I got to explain. This is the only one that's like boiled cried wolf. This is the only one that's justifiable. But then they're like, oh, I don't believe you. It's like, well, fuck me then. Okay. So whatever. While Taylor was riding with a group of four other motorcyclists, the group would inexplicably begin to swerve and crash into each other, hurling each and every rider into the air and down onto the pavement below. With it all happening so randomly and so quickly that a large SUV heading straight for them Damn. was unable to stop in time, running over each of the riders. 22-year-old Taylor Scrome was pronounced dead on the scene, along with one other 29-year-old man. With his crash occurring just a single day after this final TikTok post. Taylor's story is tragically ironic, though here on the internet you can find numerous other similar examples of final postings that led to unforeseen tragedy, with one of the most haunting coming from all the way back in 2008. 
Alright guys, I'm new here and I have a question. As I'm driving in M mode, with the car set to P500 Sport and everything set to max, as what I shift with the pedal shifters, it sounds like the tra What the hell is this? What is this code? Transmission is banging into gear. Like there is a thud that comes from the trunk when I upshift. Could this be yeah, due to the, the way that the I'm trunk? shifting or is this normal? And if so, is there any trick to working the shift? Let me say I am a beginner when it comes to high performance cars, as I'm only 18, so take it easy on me. This post was made by the user AmericanM5 on the website m5board.com, okay. a forum dedicated to drivers who owned yeah, like an LGBTQ forum, clearly. MW M5s. Yeah. Like I like I had said, an LGBTQ form. Uh, so <laughs> Okay, that's what it is. That's what it is for real. Pricey sports car revered <laughs> by many thanks to its high speed. In the thread, some users would leave genuine advice for the young driver, but many others responded with disdain, doubting that he actually owned this expensive car at such a young age. What I don't like about this video right now is the music. Is this weird distorted World of Warcraft music. Let me see if I can find it. I swear to God, it is. Right? Along with Stain, doubting that he actually owned this expensive car at such a young age. Along with some who blamed his age. It's stuck. It's his fucking distorted World of Warcraft music. I swear to God. I'm not even kidding. On these issues that he was having with his vehicle. Maybe your two years driving experience in your whole life is the problem. This is the internet after all, and so for whatever reason, maybe it seemed that many in the group took music. great offense to his youthfulness. But through it all, there were a select few who expressed concern for the young driver. As based on his posting, it was apparent that he had been driving the car very fast and potentially recklessly. Damn. With one user writing, I would much prefer an 18 year old with brains to have an M5 than spend his money on some other piece of junk that could kill him and his mates in an accident. Yeah, his mates. My only bit of advice, matey, if you crash in a big way, expect to be on the news. Enjoy and resist the temptation to drag others at the lights. True that. As well as another user who commented, please be careful driving balls. I just gotta see something. What does the music sound like in my current area that I'm in? All right, I thought it would be the same. It's out. 18-year-olds and M5s don't mix well. True. I Following guess. this, American M5 would leave a comment. When I was when I finally got my first car it was a 2004 Ford Explorer, brother. It's a pretty good car. I liked it a lot. It's pretty pretty good. I liked that it had sex in it once. And then that's un you don't need to know that information, but you know what? I was young and I had sex in it more than once. I had sex in it a lot of times. It was pretty cool. Uh, and then I got a new car, and I've only had sex with one person. That car is my wife. So how do you like that? Mostly because it's a key of soul and very small and very difficult to have sex in. And my wife and I are pretty big, and I don't know how the fuck we managed it. But that's my story. And thanking the entire forum for their input, even those who reacted negatively to his post. Thanks, guys. Don't get me wrong. I never said I didn't respect your wisdom. Thanks for the welcome, and I am looking forward to getting to know you guys better. Josh. And I plan to have all the pics up tomorrow. Yeah. With this last line referencing taking photos as proof that he did in fact own the car that he claimed to. Cool. These photos, however, cool guy. never came. Oh, I came though. As a matter of fact, following this comment on January <clears throat> 25th, 2008, American M5 went radio silent. Okay. Which is when things started to take a concerning Wasn't turn. Was that his first post anyway? Like... The very next day on January 26th, News would break of a high I mean, I wouldn't go in there either, bro, because people are being mean to me. I'd leave. I wouldn't come back to either. A speed accident having taken place at 3.54 in the morning near Jacksonville, Florida, <laughs> involving a car filled with five occupants, all between the ages of 18 to 20. Damn. According to the report, the group had driven their car onto a private airstrip in the area and had been driving at dangerously high speeds before... The driver lost control and ended up soaring. Bro, I got to make sure my kids don't fuck around with that kind of stuff. I'm going to make sure I tell my kids' friends and their parents that if my kid dies because of a car accident because of your kid, I'm going to kill you too. I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. You know, joke, of course. But, you know, be more responsible. And I'm going to tell the kid, I'm going to tell them if you're the driver and you survive, not for long. Okay? Not for long, dude.
Not for fucking long. Off the edge of an 85 foot high embankment. Papa's trying the most to, to react to this shit. I don't even need to react anymore. It's a half hour video. I got I got 44 minutes on this bitch. I did a good job, bro. I don't give a fuck. And I'm reacting. I'm good. My reaction's perfect. What are you talking about? Leading to the instant death of all five inside the vehicle. Damn. That's with terrible. the driver being identified in the report as Joshua Amarado, yep, I knew that an 18 year old I didn't. I don't know who happened that. to be driving a BMW M5. Damn. The news immediately made its way to the thread, where one user commented, Hey, American M5 lives in Florida, is 18, drives a gray M5, and signed one of his posts above, Josh. OMG, I hope this is not him. OMG. And another saying, American M5, you better respond to M5 board ASAP. We all worry now. Yeah, you better or else. So Josh would never post to this thread again. Oh shit. So is it confirmed him or just a speculation? From that day on, no activity would ever come from the American M5 account. It looks like he only made one post ever, so. And from that day on. Yeah, it looks like one. he's only made one post. I mean, it's, it, probably, it might be him. I'm not saying it's not, but this is literally the only post he's ever made, so. Discussions created one. 15 replies. Replies 15 probably on the one discussion, so it's, you know, if, it's not necessarily that crazy, but. No activity would ever come from the American M5 account. Just because he was like, oh, I'm going to make sure to talk to you guys more after this doesn't mean that he's going to. I would tell girls that shit all the time. Be like, oh, yeah, I'll call you. You know, no, no. What happened? It is what it is, brother. Making it all too likely that he was the one behind the wheel Damn. of that terrible accident. Damn. Sad stuff, brother. Sad stuff. All right, I guess that's the whole fucking video, man. Well, <clears throat> good video. A little spooky. A little spooky, I, I'd say. A little a little spooky boy. Made me a little a scurred. All right, well. um, 